Welcome to the Thriving Tides Podcast. I'm Stephanie. And I'm Julianne. If you're an entrepreneur or busy individual looking for self-care ideas, you're in the right place. And we can't wait to share our experiences with you. All right. So we are back with our first guest of season three on Thriving Tides. So excited to have you here, Leona. Um, Before we dive in, I'm going to tell everyone a little bit about you so that they know who we're speaking to and and why we were so excited to have you here today. Uh, So Leona Devin is a certified coach and facilitator with DeVille Partners, a coach and joy guru at leonadevin.com. And she's a sock broker. You heard that (laughs) correctly. Not stock, sock Sock. at joysocks.ca. Sorry. Um, In her professional life as a leadership coach and consultant, she provides leaders across the globe with research-backed tools to lead exquisite expertise that creates cohesive teams and thriving organizations. In her recently published book, Finding your joy spot. (laughs) (laughs) She provides practical frameworks that are science-based to help readers discover joy in unexpected places. She's got lots of gritty personal stories and ample doses of humor um, where she gently guides readers to experience more joy every day with self-reflection questions and hands-on tools. So you'll be first be sure to find your joy spots and you'll be very glad that you did. Um, and she is my coach. So that's how we connected and we brought her here today and we're very excited to, uh, spread some joy through this podcast. Yay. Yay. Thank you for having me. Such a privilege. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, so I guess we'll just dive right in. I think we're probably going to go in a million directions, which is very exciting for us. (laughs) Um, but in the intro, as I said, you, you do a number of different things. I'm curious to hear what has your journey been like to get you to running multiple businesses? Um, I think I'm a, uh, uh, well, clearly I am a serial entrepreneur. I'd be like <laughs> lying and being a serial entrepreneur. I come from a long line of uh, uh, entrepreneurs. I never considered myself, oh, this is like part of our legacy. I have to carry it on. I think I've always valued the um, uh, freedom to create something. And um, and I think that's a lot of even just what I... Um, I am mildly obsessed about joy. I just think as we follow our truth, sometimes it's not like linear, right? We're like, okay, not that we want to work in a cubicle sometimes and just have a salaried position. Cause often when we have that, we, we want what we don't have, mm. but, um, if we're creative, if we're entrepreneurial, um, if we're innovative and we have ideas to bring to the world, then sometimes that can look quite diverse. And that in my case is, um, what happened. Um, and that, um, I recently just launched a personal brand, which is leonadevin.com. So I had a little bit more permission to come out as a little bit more, uh, sassy and fun, um, Mm -hmm. and still keep that corporate side still sassy and fun, but, um, a little bit more organizationally focused. So those two things do overlap, but if somebody, you know, comes to hire me on the personal side for coaching, or they need a mentor coach as an example, how you and I met Julianne, then they sort of see that part. And it's not that they're very different, but Mm -hmm. I wasn't as diluted. So that's why the two companies look different, but they're very similar. And the joy sock brand started, um, I started to send out goofy socks to clients and, um, just for fun. And cause who doesn't like to get mail and I love <laughs> ridiculous socks. And they started to send back pictures of their feet with the socks on, like under mm-hmm. like boots that they were wearing to like the office tax accountants, very serious very serious people, doing very serious <laughs> yeah. things that I can't do. And yeah. uh, they were like, Oh my goodness. And look at my joy socks. So they started to name the socks. Mm. And so that's how that started. And then my son uh, later had brain surgery and I was wearing goofy socks every day, even though I felt like I was going to a funeral every day, going to see him in the hospital mm. and people were like, Oh my gosh, we need your socks. And I was like, you do because it sucks here. And so within 10 days of his surgery, I got a very small inheritance for my grandfather who died a long time ago, but they were closing off, um, the estate and he gave me $300. And I literally went to Dollarama, the dollar store and had an Ikea commercial moment where it was like, start the car. Cause I bought all their socks. <laughs> 
And I emailed Ronald McDonald house and I said, I told him a bit of the story. And I was like, would you like joy socks? And they were like an hour and a half later, they were like, yes, we would. And I was like, awesome. I'll host tomorrow. And so since then we have branded joy socks that we give away and uh, we give them to charity shelters and hospitals. And I, we started out with Ronald McDonald house. And since then we've given away like over 10,000 pairs of socks. So that was a completely oh, accidental and not on, entre- well, I, it might be a creative idea, but it is certainly a nonprofit run mm-hmm. by yours truly and a bunch of other yeah, sock brokers. And that must bring you so much joy in an in of itself too, right? I know. Today yeah. we just gave <laughs> we gave away a bunch of socks to the actually the the um the uh what do you call it in a hospital? The ward that he was recovering in, they found out about joy socks and um they just picked up a bunch of socks today because COVID has made socks feel a little contaminated apparently. But now they're like, <laughs> we need your joy. So and um and with uh every copy of joy sock or finding your joy spot that's being sold, I'm uh donating a pair of socks to mental health um unit in local hospitals. So it may get a little bit they <laughs> make a lot of socks, so we'll spread things out. But I just had a local hospital that um, is going to give a pair of joy socks to everybody, uh, every patient in their hospital in October. Mm. So, wow, that's awesome. Great. Because you have to slump around in those awful gowns, right? And you got like IVs and no dignity, but then you see like people wearing these insane socks. It's very fun. Mm. So it just gives you something to smile about. I know. Even just a conversation starter. I like that. I know. I, I was going to say, but I, every time I wear my crazy socks, it's mm-hmm. always a conversation starter. Like, exactly. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. I don't no. think Stephanie owns a pair of just plain socks. Like she's always wearing plain oh, socks. Stephanie, so. I did not know this. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> it's a rainy, gross day. You don't want to ruin your nice socks. True. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Maybe you already have so much joy. You're just like, I can't take an ounce more. Yeah. Yeah. What, no more joy goal? Goal. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I'm at capacity. I've just yes. had yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Enjoyed out. Today. No more joy. Enjoyed out. <laughs> yeah, indeed. I indeed. love it. Yeah, yeah. That is so cool. Yeah. So that's how all of that started. I just, I get these. I, I'm, I've called, cooled down when I get an idea now. I'm just like that. This well, you yeah. might. Yeah, there may not be enough self care that's going to like cover all the bases here. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Um, I'd love to hear. So yeah, like you kind of have a few different entities and there's a bit of overlap amongst mm-hmm. them all. Um, how do you juggle all these different responsibilities so that you can kind of stay sane through all Function? of this as well? Yeah. Yeah. So I am super committed to, um, making sure that I live life. Well, I never say that life is short because we have no idea, but I do believe that life is precious. So how, uh, and it's what I do with my clients as well, whether they're, you know, you know, leading a team in a large, you know, organization or an entrepreneur running their business. Um, and integrity to me says that I'm doing this work myself so that somebody else is like, you know, (laughs) half dead with exhaustion. And I'm just like, Oh, you're fine. So, um, Resourcefulness is a huge value of mine. So making sure that I'm really using my resources well. Mm -hmm. So I do have uh, support. I mean, at first it was just me doing it and um, it was uh, uh, a lot of work. I've always been committed to trying to to perform my own science experiment that what can I get done in 40 hours a week? And I know it doesn't have to be 40 hours a week, but I'm like, it's almost easier to work 80 hours a week and be super busy than it is to be really smart mm. and try to do it in 40. Yeah. So I've always been committed to, there are weeks that I work slightly more. Um, so a lot of delegation, I have assistance with um, Joy Sox. It was an exper- interesting experience because I don't have hired help, but to run a whole team of volunteers. So we literally have a Facebook group and I'm like, hey, you know, this hospital needs 600 pairs of socks who wants to, they have joy sock packing parties. Like, so where, you know, people get together instead of like buying makeup or something, they, or Avon, I'm old. Um, they literally sit around and drink wine and like pack them like Jedis wow. for the evening. So cool. And so people love it because they will invite their like neighbors or whatever. And obviously COVID 
that very unfriendly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so delegating to volunteers, I do have assistants and I always think what is the best use of my time? So that ROI matters big mm-hmm. time. And am I, am I investing into what is going to give me back what I need? So if it's revenue that I'm looking to generate, um, then I'm, I'm looking at what is the best way to do that and the most effective way. And I know that you probably see that too, right? Some people are just like, oh, I spent four hours on Canva creating this. I'm like, there's a lot of things that you can do in four hours. And bless you, Mm -hmm. if Canva is your absolute joy spot, then please, please, please bring that on. Mm -hmm. But if you're trying to build a business and you're spending four hours on two images for Instagram that are about your dog, then we are in trouble unless you are a dog walker, but then do you have a call to action? Right. Right. (laughs) (laughs) And nobody cares what color those are. Cause even if your grid on Instagram is not perfect, um, it's not going to drive revenue. So Mm -hmm. I think even just coming from a long line of business people that it's like, is this the best use of your time? Cause if it's not, then you might as well be doing something else. Like just go take a nap or go for a walk. Cause that would be probably much more restorative. Um, yeah. So really using my time well, and I do have help. That's awesome. And what would you say, like, is the best advice for people that aren't really capable yet of delegating? Cause that's mm. my biggest thing is like a lot of yeah. people are like, Oh, Steph, I really want to hire you as a designer to fill in yeah. those gaps, yeah. but they're like, Oh, but I just can't afford it right now. And I'm still, I can still kind of do it on Canva. Oh. And I'm just like, mm. Okay, that's cool. But and I I get it. Like sometimes it's like your business is your baby when you're first yeah. starting. Yeah. What would be your advice to like get people? I, to- I always wonder, and I don't always say it this way, but can you afford not to? Mm-hmm. Right. So I have colleagues that are coaches and they're they're doing quite well and they're kind of at the cusp. And so, but they're still doing their own like blog updates on their comp- you know, or they're still reworking their website. And that's fine if you want to, if you start that way, but can you afford not to hire someone like you, Stephanie, when think of what you could be doing, you could be calling up somebody that you haven't, you know, connected for a while with and love to meet, or can we connect about how I might support you and actually get a client during that time while Stephanie is like making magic behind the scenes. Mm. I also would say that nobody, but like a Stephanie, like you have expertise. There's no way me on Canva, like I can decorate (laughs) my house without a designer. I spend money on design. And you wouldn't necessarily see that on like Instagram, but if you go to my websites, they look good. Um, yeah. And people hire me for my websites because of how they feel. I was like, okay, that ain't me. <laughs> Even my book, <laughs> my book was like, oh my goodness, it looks so happy. I was like, yeah. okay, I was not up at night rearranging those polka dots. Mm. There are good people. So I think knowing where your strengths lie and knowing what your best ROI is, that's important. And so mm. maybe they can't buy a design package from you, but let's start and let's scale in that direction. Okay. Uh, and build that up. Um, yeah, I, I often use, a, um, you know, it's expensive not to hire good help, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. No, yeah. yeah, I think that's a really important thing mm-hmm. too. Because yeah, sometimes it's like you're, especially when you're first starting your business, because I know we have a couple people that are first starting their business. Yeah. It's so scary to let go of anything because it's like that, it's your baby. Yeah, Yeah, totally. Or even asking like, what is your budget then? Right. If you can't Mm -hmm. buy one of my packages, what might your budget be? Well, could we even try to eat? And I'm not saying that you need to dilute what you do and this does not need to be your business plan, but then I might say, okay, what, what would you be able to afford? And let's see what you could do. And then let's talk, use a few coaching skills. What was that like, right. For you to have this off your plate? What was it like? Like when I got, uh, this is actually the, uh, the joy spot, uh, book cover is actually your same logo from joy socks. I liked it so much that I started crying. Awesome. So I was like, I was like, yeah, we're just going to repurpose it on the front of the book. Cause I loved it <laughs> so much. Uh, awesome. so I was like, yeah, but you need good people to do things that you necessarily can't do. Mm-hmm. And I think in design and accounting, uh, there's expertise yeah. that we need. We need to get people's <laughs> help. So yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. I think that's so important too, because what we hear from a lot of our community um, are, there's a lot of solo entrepreneurs and it's lonely. 
So when you get to the point where you start building this team around you as well and hiring the experts for these little pockets, not only are you increasing your ROI, but you're probably increasing your joy and your ability to do things too, because now you've got this community around you that is helping you grow. Yeah. And even the energy that kind of is put into something, I love beautiful things, but I cannot make graphics. So even from, you know, I love neuroscience, like a, that perspective, it's so gritty and hard for me to pop out of that and do something innovative or connect with somebody thinking about, you know, building my business. It's going to be hard for me even to recover from doing something that's really not in my wheelhouse talent wise. Right. And so grinding into something that's not in our wheelhouse and then expecting to come out and be bright eyed and bushy tailed and be, you know, ready to think innovative ideas about creating income and new opportunities. (laughs) It's going to take some time. Yeah. 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 And a cup of coffee isn't going to heal that. So I think that's (laughs) important to for people to realize too. And I think Mm -hmm. sometimes they think, well, I don't have, you know, $1,500 to hire that person. What do you have? I don't want other business owners to dilute, like I said, but Maybe there is a possibility to start doing something because I know you both are really big into self-care. I just think you could be spending that time differently, even if you just, you know, invested a couple hundred dollars a month. I'm thinking about like when I remember when I hired somebody to do my invoicing and somebody's Mm -hmm. like, yeah, you you could just do that. I'm like, yeah, but it's still at the end of the month and you should see who I become at the end of the month. (laughs) I don't even want people's money. Cause I was like, what, who did I work with? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't even care. I'm like, whatever you're fine. Yeah. Yeah. On the house. I'd rather (laughs) starve than send out invoices. Um, and I just even think then like just baby steps, you don't have to do, Mm -hmm. you want to be wise as an entrepreneur. You want to keep the profit margins high, but baby steps towards becoming the person in business that you really want to become mm-hmm. so that you can care for yourself too. Mm. Mm. I really like that. Yeah. It's, um, it was making me think too, of where is that joy for you? Right. So I think if people start recognizing, like, when are they becoming that person, they don't want to yeah. be <laughs> like you were saying totally. versus totally. when you're in that zone of genius or in that flow, yeah. like that's where you really want to be. Totally. Um, but these times where you come out of, you know, doing something for an hour and you feel totally deflated, well, maybe that's <laughs> totally. not where you need to be. No, no. <laughs> and there are some painful things that we all have to do. And I, I, um, mm-hmm. follow you, Julianne, and you've really actually inspired me on, uh, Instagram and you're just like on your stories. Nobody can fake that. Like Stephanie mm-hmm. can't come and do, Ju- she could do Julianne's stories for a day. That would be very fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, um, but you have to do that. So if yes. you don't love that, that still might always not feel the best, mm-hmm. but even there, just sometimes stepping into courage, uh, just going, okay, this is something I, this cannot be hired out. <laughs> yeah. Not yet. Maybe when I make $4 million, then we can just like fake our way through it. But even then you <laughs> probably got to do some of those things generally and yourself, <laughs> but so you may not love it and it might feel gritty, but there's still just, okay, I need to do this. So I'm showing up and I'm doing this. And there's some, we get that reward, you know, of, you know, joy or some happiness, or, you know, I did that after doing something courageous. So it's still Mm -hmm. worth it. So not everything can we get rid of, but I do think it's important to notice, like for some of us, like I cannot do anything graphically. (laughs) It's like, you haven't helped us all. And I hate, I, I I tell everybody, I'm like, I do money, but I do not do math. So I'm like, I don't care how like it's added up. I just know how much I have. Are we good? That's it. But the details around things, yeah, are terrible. So mm. um, it's really important to know that, yeah, that sort of that sweet spot is important. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Where where did coaching come into play for you? Um, you've been doing it for a little while now, yep. but I'm curious to hear like what was that journey to get you there? And because you coach and you consult. And they kind of overlap at times. (laughs) Yes, they Um, do. (laughs) Yeah. So I just want to hear a little more about that journey for you. So I was actually, um, I was a late bloomer, um, uh, dropped out of university, uh, got married young, come from an immigrant family. It was sort of like understood that you would get like married and apparently have a baby at 22. That seemed very normal in my family. I now look back and I'm like, Wow. (laughs) Anyway, so I did that. I did that well. And so I dropped out of university because I had said baby and um, you can't really take toddlers to university. So I took her for a year and then uh, uh, did not get a chance to complete. 
And so went back when I was 38 um, and uh, was completing my degree in psychology and was going to go uh, get my master's in psychology because I wanted to be a therapist. Mm. And I met a coach and um, I was at some wellness fair. And as I was leaving, the person who was running the wellness fair knew me and he said, hey, you, you need to put in your, you know, your name for this draw. I'm like, Okay, sure. So I did it. And I, I loved the coach because I had, I had looked at this university. I always love learning and the, the, this CTI coaching mm-hmm. the ones that you and I have trained in uh, yeah. was offered at the university. And mm-hmm. I was talking to the coach and she said, yeah, I'm CTI trained. And I was like, oh, I've always looked at it because it sounds so practical. Mm-hmm. I, and at the time they had part of the curriculum, one of the courses was called in the bones. And I am like a practical person, like Do not tell me I, yeah, my, like my education is in psychology, but it is useless. You do not learn how to talk to anybody. You know, that like when you smash the back of your head, the reason you see stars is because you have like part of what communicates in your brain to your eyeballs. This is Mm -hmm. not, well, that's nice. When you see stars, you're like, oh, I smashed my head and it's communicating. Right. Uh, it's not practical. <laughs> Nobody cares. So um, when I was talking to her, she was a lovely human being. And um, I had to put my name in the straw and I ended up winning a session with her. Mm-hmm. And uh, she sent me all her intake forms. I was going through a divorce at the time, had been married for like 20 years. And she sent me all this intake forms. Like, you know, if, you know, if you had one thing to do before you died, you know, what would you do? You know, coaches can be a little weird. Um, and, <laughs> yes, we uh, yes. Um, I had never self-reflected. I don't think in my whole life, I had just mm. worked my tail off raising my kids. I have another business that I started that I still run. Um, but people do all the things, um, for me now. And so I don't talk about it much and, um, I just been busy. And so all these self reflections collection questions. And then I got a coaching session. I literally am at the parking lot at the university where I'm finishing off my degree. And, um, she's like, what was that like to fill out the intake forms? I said, that was amazing. Like, like who does this? (laughs) Like who thinks about how they want to like give back and all these things. She goes, you sound like a coach. And I was like, (laughs) I was like, okay. And, uh, as she said, I think you should take the course. And I'm like, I am not a weirdo. I do not do something like randomly. I said, well, I do know there's a course starting in Calgary in my very city in 10 days. She's like, well, why do you know that? I was like, cause I always like pay attention. And she's like, don't you think that's weird? And I was like, well, I'm sure everybody pays attention, which I now think I'm weird. And she's like, (laughs) she said, she goes, no, they're not. They're like, learn Chinese or, you know, learn accounting. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And she's like, there's a reason that you keep looking at it. And I was like, She goes, I think you're a coach. She goes, you're much more strength focused than you are pathological, which is why I don't Mm -hmm. care why eyes light up and do weird things. And (laughs) not that that's pathological. Um, (laughs) So she challenged me like a complete crazy coach and said, Leona, I want you to sign up within 24 hours. You know what coaching costs. Yeah. I am a cheap Dutch immigrant. Sorry to all the Dutch people who aren't cheap, but it is like 98% of us do not spend money. My husband's so, Dutch and he's oh, pretty cheap. Stephanie. So. <laughs> See? I, I, I was thinking about them. Yeah. <laughs> See? Sorry, Stephanie's husband. We're not going to edit that out. We love him. We, love, great, we yeah. love him. It's probably very straightforward also. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, anyways, so... I, um, signed up within 24 hours, uh, somebody randomly, well, not randomly, uh, came in from out of town and she was having dinner with us that very night. I talked to the coach at two, uh, she goes, you wouldn't believe it, but I won six coaching sessions. I had never even heard of coaching until I met this person like two weeks before that. She goes, it has changed how I lived. Wow. How I live. And I was, and that was a CTI coach too. And I was like, Mm. oh, for heaven's sakes. So I um, was talking to my sister the next day and she's like, you have to do this. Mm. So I have never done anything like this in my life. I literally cleaned out my business business account. I had like $25 left and I signed up. Awesome. Took the and risk, then just jumped. Took the risk, jumped in. Um, I was told while I was in it that only 2% of people have successful coaching practices. Wow. And we're here. Wow. <laughs> That's scary. We're here. Uh. Um, 
<laughs> and that's when I first started to notice joy. I was going through a mm. brutal divorce. I was devastated. It was not what I had planned. I had invested a lot in making sure that we had a very I call success is like, are you investing in the right things? And I thought I had invested in the right things mm -hmm. and, um, sacrificed a lot. Um, not in a bad way, but just hadn't made myself a priority in my career and was in a real vulnerable place. And I was going for one of the weekends. And one of my daughters said, mom, are you excited? And she's like a normal teenager. Like I have not like raised baby coaches or anything. Um, <laughs> and she just said, mom, how are you feeling about doing this? And I was like, I feel this weird gurgling in my throat. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't even know what it is. And she's like, I think it's joy because you're doing what you're meant to be doing. And I was like, oh, wow, that's so cute. So that's where I started to notice it. And I was literally mm -hmm. living in my basement, um, sleeping on the floor. My dog was sleeping on the couch. We were just trying to separate things and our family was a disaster. And that's where I started to notice joy. And then mm -hmm. when I started to coach clients, I was working with a coach and my coach said, what's the byproduct of your, I said, she said, what is, you know, Julianne, we do like purpose and all these things. Mm -hmm. And, um, and she said, what do you think you do at your essence? I said, I think I, I feel like I help people uncover their truth. Mm -hmm. And she's like, and what's the byproduct of that? I said, they experience joy. It makes like the, mm -hmm. they like, they see like, it's like, Oh my goodness. I'm like, it's like a <laughs> hallelujah moment. Even if yeah. you've never been to church, you're like, this is amazing. Uh, I don't think church is actually like that, but, um, <laughs> not, uh, often too. Yeah, yeah, not, that, not that joyful, not that joyful. You watch out for the lightning to strike. No offense. Um, and so that's where I became obsessed with joy because I was like, when people discover their truth, they start to notice joy. And so joy mm. is not this trite, like, Ooh, I'm happy. Yay. Joy is the more, the more they become them, the more joy they start to experience. So mm. even when they're having tough days or they have to do an Instagram story, or they're asking for somebody's business by being true to who they are, they get this spot of joy. And that's mm. where it all, all began in coaching. And now yeah. I just notice joy everywhere. So that's cool. Awesome. I love how you bring it, you know, being your true self to that. Um, cause we talk about authenticity a lot Aww. on this podcast as mm -hmm. well. And that's something yeah. that Steph preaches so much as she helps people build out what their brand is for their business yes. and everything. Mm -hmm. So, um, You're I feel like the stars spreader, are just Stephanie. all aligned. I know. Isn't it great? <laughs> and when, when you create something that is in line with their authentic selves, which is a bit of magic, because it's kind of like, and this is not to like lessen what you do, but to me, it's like a really good hairdresser where you're like, I want this, this, and this. <laughs> We've probably all been to the bad ones. And you're like, <laughs> that bench turned out to be six <laughs> inches. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and your version of blonde is a little darker than mine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So you want to look like Julianne and you come out looking like Leona. That is a terrifying thing. <laughs> and when you are trying to like build out somebody's brand and for you too, Julianne, right? Like leadership mm -hmm. coaching, when you're really trying to help them get to the truth of who they are, mm -hmm. there is a bit of magic to suss that out. Right. So, um, but when you, when it is, then there's this spark mm -hmm. and I call it joy. Yeah. 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 Cool. I like that. That's so cool. So joy has been in your life for quite some time. About 11 years prior yeah. to that. Not so much. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah. So that, that's how it all started hidden in that. Time, it was hidden. Right? Yes. Yeah. 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 And too busy just doing like, just being, just serving roles and not mm. poorly, but just, um, and again, I think you would see that in both of your, your clients, right? Like, oh, if I'm going to do, I don't know, like Stephanie, if you're going to do Julianne's, you know, branding, then if you're not understanding what's important, Julianne, and you bring that to Stephanie, you might get a very dry brand. Cause you're like, Oh, I'm doing corporate work. Like mm -hmm. how's black and white? Like, don't go crazy. No right. polka dots, please. No confetti coming out of your head. Um, <laughs> that's my brand. Um, but then when you, when you know more about yourself, then you can really show up so fully. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. And then you wrote a book. 
And then I accidentally wrote a book. Yes. Accidentally? accidentally. <laughs> Nothing's accidental. It's so um, cute. So my, oh, I had the best coach and then she died. And I do contribute it probably part to the hard work that she had to do with me to get me to write. It took three years of coaching to get me to write my first blog. She said, mm. I think you're a writer. I was like, I think you're a psychopath. Um, <laughs> so she would laugh. She would laugh, but I may have yeah, advanced some of her disease. And um, she was wonderful. And she said to me, I think you're a writer. I think you need to write. And I was like, no. And again, no, I'm a terrible writer. I can't write. Um, and so I did start to slowly come out of the closet and start to write. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, that was still terrifying. And so I started to write blogs. And uh, a lot of the book is a combination of blogs that I wrote. And then at one point, Ariana Huffington asked me personally <laughs> to blog. I still have her email. I can send you the screenshot because I still Amazing. am in shock. She asked me to blog for the Huff Post at the same at, at one point. So that was like an actual, actual, I'm not even joking. So if you ever thought I'd like to write a book and but I couldn't, it's an actual miracle that Ariana Huffington, I think I spelled there and there wrong twice in the email that I wrote to her. <laughs> And miraculously, she wrote back and said, I'd like to, I'd like to have your voice featured on the Huff Post. And I was like, yeah. I literally uh, almost died. Uh, and by then my first coach had passed away, but I just like felt like all of this and her encouragement was such a gift. And, mm -hmm. um, and so it started just baby steps. So I, I love to encourage my clients because they're like, I don't know where this is going to end. I'm like, please just start. I'm not, I don't know if it's going to end up in a book or a TV yeah. series or, you know, a world, you know, renowned podcast, but please start because if yeah. you don't, your podcast never, <laughs> you know, goes anywhere if yeah. you don't ever start. So, um, so after a while, I noticed that there was this common thread about joy and different ways. And I love research that's practical. Um, and, um, and so there was this common thread and, um, I sometimes wonder about the title I have lost some sleep over it because people are like, <laughs> and what perhaps might a suburban mother in her fifties, be writing a book called finding your joy spot. Then the other day I looked at the tagline, which clearly it is my tagline, yeah. discovering joy, helping you discover joy in unexpected places. I was like, Oh my gosh. But it was kind of like naming your dog or your child. It's like, that's the name. Once it's there, you're just like, yeah, I, when, I, I was like, yeah. cause I said to my husband, I can change it. Like I can get my person to change like the whole cover minus like the polka dots. Cause that's my life force. <laughs> and she's like, I said, but I feel like it's like, it's like the kid's name. It's like when you pick the name and you know, the right name, it's the right mm -hmm. name. So, uh, yes, it sounds like it might have some connotations and it is, does not <laughs> like, it is like not at all. But, um, so the book became like step-by-step. Step. I felt like there was this thread that was woven through. Um, and what I found most uh, astounding was not only my clients discovering their truth and experience seeing these like spots of joy that that would then bolster them to have more courage and resilience in their businesses and in their lives. But that it's sometimes in the hardest moments, um, not just in work things, that there was amazing joy that could really kind of like Reese's Pieces and E.T. <laughs> That's a really old example. I'm so <laughs> sorry if you were in utero when E.T. came out. I, that's totally fine. My kids are like, you need some new examples. I'm like, yeah, but there's been nothing <laughs> since Reese's Pieces and E.T. So it, it like lighted the path if you've never yeah. watched it. Um, like a landing strip. Let's go there. And um, and I just thought, what an encouragement for some of the most brutal things that I've been through uh, my, my mom died of a brain tumor when I was 22, my son, uh, and I have the same condition to watch my son suffer from this. But once you start to like, look for these spots, it's amazing how they literally carry you through the hardest of times. And I would say they're the most delicious mm -hmm. in those moments. And I, 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 I believe that that is, um, that's something that carries us. And it's also supported by, you know, science, just looking for, you know, 
when we train our brains to be more positive, and I never mean Pollyannish and I do not mean trite, but when we train our brains to look for those bright spots, those can be the things that carry us through. And I didn't want people, I mean, and there's a million people, <laughs> if you're going to Amazon, I am not the only joy girl. Um, <laughs> you're my joy girl though. Uh, thank you. <laughs> um, but I, um, yeah. And I just thought like, people need to know this, your life does not have to, and that's why I meant unexpected places. Um, was that your life does not have to be perfect. You do not have to be a seven figure coach and have 14 mm -hmm. assistants and little Sherpas that carry your purse, um, <laughs> that to have a really great life, mm -hmm. there is joy for us that reminds us of our truth, reminds us of what's important, even when things are hard. Um, and that comes from knowing your truth from pivoting a bit in our mindset at times, um, from creating meaning from really tough things. Um, and so that's really my desire in my work is that people find their truth. And then as a result, it's not my fault. They're going to find joy. Um, and, um, and there's like really solid research around that. Every chapter in the book is built around the framework of flourishing, which is uh, based in the work of uh, Martin Seligman and positive psychology. And, um, and how can people find that way to really live the way that brings them meaning, that feels purposeful, that feels in line with the legacy they want to create? Um, and how can they do that? So whether I'm, again, uh, training, you know, leaders in large organizations, whether I'm, you know, working with somebody who just doesn't even know what joy feels like anymore, or I'm working with, you know, incredible leaders and entrepreneurs. Um, yeah, it is just such an incredible privilege to have them live in line with what matters to them. That's awesome. That's cool. What was it like to actually write the book? So you said that you like pulled different pieces of blogs and stuff together, but I mean, this still was like a very large project. And, new to you, <laughs> yeah. and so here's a story I have lived by my whole life, which my husband literally probably is drinking in the basement, thinking of the lies that I tell myself <laughs> that I just said to him the other day, I was like, so I was journaling and I was like, I made up a story that I don't like to do big projects or I never complete big projects. Hmm. Good story. Um, so I think it was, it was good to know I wasn't going to write a book when said coach was like, I think you should write, <laughs> I would have crawled under a rock and I would not be seen. Um, so, um, but there were funny moments, even I remember, um, and I'm sure perhaps you've had a similar moments, uh, broke up with, a a, a guy and, um, after my marriage and, uh, I was like, you know what? I am in such a great place. I do not need the partnership thing. I am good. I'm just going to be single and write a book. I was like, why did I even say that? I was like, does these things like just happen then? Like you're legally <laughs> obligated to whatever stuff you say when you're sitting on a couch drinking coffee. So I did end up with a really great partner. Um, but that was not even him was, he was like, it's almost terrifying. Cause I know you like you don't need me. You just want me. I'm like, this is true. Uh, so <laughs> stay in line, which he knows yeah. uh, seven <laughs> years later, he is my joy. Um, and yeah, so I made up that I don't do big projects and it is a big project, but I think with everything, taking it one step at a time is how you start. So who knows, like what you've done in your podcast could end up being a book because mm -hmm. I know that you're, you know, creating blogs from that. And then that ends up being a book and you're like, okay, uh, who knew? Yeah, um, that's a good point. <laughs> I never would have thought Thank of that. You. <laughs> Joy spot found. Uh, yeah. Do it. We'll talk. Um, Did you see my eyes wide? A yeah, I know. I I know. Like, <laughs> Self-care for leaders. We'll come up with a saucy title accidentally. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like and it. yeah, exactly. <laughs> we have um, a graphic designer so, here for oh, our cover. <laughs> you guys are actually it. We should, we should, I should be coaching you until you're yeah, magnificent. <laughs> um, um, it is much more work than I thought. Cause I thought the writing would be work. And so when I realized I had a work of writing that I had to string together, that was a lot of work. Um, but then like the editing, and as you know, right. When I even hear the word at the E word, I'm like, oh, bless you, Stephanie. Really? <laughs> that is hard. <laughs> yeah. um, that is a lot of work. Mm -hmm. um, 
my commitment was to make it into a book. I hired somebody who was going to do like the, um, you hire an editor, but you still have to, it's your baby. So you still have to make it sure that it's somewhat cute and doesn't have 1700 like misconstrued things and things still get messed. I working on the audio book, <laughs> there's a spelling error in there. Sorry. <laughs> you'll, you'll find it, Julianne. <laughs> uh, I'll send you a refund. Um, um, but I, I think again, just remind yourself, Kate, step by step, step by step. So she had set out the timeline for me. Um, and because of my Enneagram type, I think that, you know, Enneagrams, yeah, did you do something I, on Enneagrams? We did. I'm a one, which is horrifying, oh, no. horrifying. <laughs> we are the most dry, painful people. But Hey, Brene but- Brown is a one. I know, so. but we met when we, when we are evolved, we manifest as a seven. So everybody, including my coach thought I was a seven. Mm. <laughs> no, <laughs> we follow, no. we, we follow rules and are super disciplined. Mm. So she literally was like, okay, bye. Whatever. Uh, when I hired her by October 22nd, this has to be done. So when you give me a rule, except for speeding, um, I follow it. <laughs> so that helped. <laughs> so having somebody to be accountable for mm-hmm. really helped and then to break it up into chunks. And mm-hmm. so I just went, okay, chunk it up one step at a time. Yes. Can I have that done again? I did delegate some extra stuff. It needed to be read. I don't even know. I think I've read it 29 times. We're just mm-hmm. starting to like each other again. Um, but I had like random people. I paid my kid. My kid was off on COVID leave. <laughs> I was like, I will pay you <laughs> to read this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and still talk to me after. And um, again, so delegation, using my resources well, and just step by step by step. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Um, so, but it was a lot more work than I had anticipated and more work on the editing side than I thought on the writing side. I thought, mm-hmm. well, wow, it's pretty good, right? Like I'm 90% done. No. <laughs> No. Surprise. <laughs> surprise. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Not yeah. such a joyful surprise. <laughs> no, no, I know. So people are like, how do you feel about it? I was like, it's like having a baby and you're just like, okay, that is done. Okay. That was hard. The pushing was tough. Thank goodness you're here. You're sort of cute and we're just going to get used <laughs> to each other. So, um, but I'm very glad it's complete and, um, I'm very glad that it, it happened, but it was more work than I thought, but mostly because I'm not a detailed person. I think some people might actually enjoy that part. Whereas I'm like, no, I think it's good. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Let's yeah. just publish it. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, why can't you do those nuanced editing? Cause it's in your voice, Leona. I was like, will anybody really be able to tell? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Give it back. Yeah. 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 So the gestation is a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's but, it, but good, but good. Done, yeah. done, done. I would not, I would not ever discourage anybody, but just step it out. Just mm-hmm. can we do that next month? Yes, we can. Um, and that's the same for building our business, right? Like I just think if we all, we all looked at how much work it would be, we probably wouldn't do it. We're just like, mm-hmm. okay, let's contact one person. Let's put up the landing page. Okay. We can do those things. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yeah. 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 Well, and Leona was coaching me through because I was like telling her about the blog posts. Oh, <laughs> it's like so overwhelming. There's so many to write because so we many. didn't know at the beginning that we wanted to also have blog posts and, you know, like, yeah, <sighs> we're getting there. And, and now yeah. you're like, it's going to be a book. So now we're really after send finish. me a message because <laughs> I've got the, I've got, I learned all the things, <laughs> not all the things, but enough to get you started and to yeah, not have you step in the wrong direction, but yeah, think think there's there's this a possibility i think new things are being born right now okay <laughs> step one let's get the website done. Okay. <laughs> we'll See, on. step one yes. step one you're doing yes. such a great job stephanie step one yeah step yeah. one, step one. Step one. <laughs> our website yeah. is coming along so beautifully i can't yes. wait till we unveil it yes. oh so it'll, yay it'll be worth the wait for our listeners yes, <laughs> yes. yay and we did a yay. beach photo shoot and oh yeah. yeah new photos blogs updated new graphics it's amazing yay look at you see yeah it's coming i like it i like it <laughs> yeah that's awesome that's awesome yeah um what do i want to ask you next 
I want to know what, uh, what brings you the most joy? What brings me the most joy? Um, I'm like, do I give the most boring answer most to mankind? Um, what gives me the most joy professionally is seeing other people live out their truth and live mm. it like live it. I just think it is the most amazing thing. There is no one size fits all approach. And when people have the courage to just live and I, I, I feel like, like your joy spot is kind of like, is Aiki guy, like that Japanese sort of idea, like that skills, talents, experience. And if you're doing it for a career, like, you know, what the world needs and <laughs> what can make money, because you could be a very volunteerish person and be yeah. homeless and <laughs> feel like you've missed a bit of your joy spot. Um, and so that, like, I just, I literally have run through my house clapping after, <laughs> which is embarrassing. Um, but nobody was here, uh, after coaching calls. Cause I'm just like, that is the most amazing thing. And you can't tell anybody, mm -hmm. as you know, yeah. <laughs> Julianne, right. Like even coming on today, I'm like, Oh, you can mention that we know each other. And yes. otherwise it's like, hi, how lovely yeah, um, to, be, <laughs> to be Instagram friends. How delicious. Yeah. Um, and Stephanie, I'm coming for you. So, um, <laughs> sorry, uh, if you go lobster fishing, I will too comment and tell you how amazing that is. Um, so that is like my most amazing thing. And whether it's like a seven-year-old who decided to like, I don't know, write a thank you card to their neighbor. Cause they think, you know, it's just so authentic. It just, I cannot stand it is the most beautiful thing. Mm. Um, um, and so for myself also living out that truth and kind of liberating myself, I've always thought I was kind of a goofy weirdo, uh, which I'm pretty convinced that I am, but being <laughs> able to be, yeah, I am not like someone else. Um, uh, you know, what I find joy in or what motivates me or gets me up in the morning as I get up at five o'clock every morning, people are like, um, <laughs> that is me. And I just think what a wonderful journey to come home to yourself and to see people come home to themselves, like so delicious. And we screw up and we circle back and, uh, sometimes we're too much for somebody or not enough for somebody or whatever, but it's just like to know at the end of the day that you're trying your very best to be as true as possible to yourself and doing that with great courage and sometimes great, great fear and doing it anyways is the most awesome thing. And I think if we were all more worried about being true to ourselves, living into our values, um, living with integrity, being, you know, you talk about authentic, um, gosh, the world would be a better place. Mm. Right. So good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's yeah. powerful. It makes me think of one of the sessions that you and I had too, where you kept asking me like, what do I want? Right. And, and I think what the final answer, once you got through my yeah. pretend ones or my superficial yeah. ones is I just want to be a hundred percent myself totally. in all parts of my life. Right. And so that's what we're working together on, on helping me cultivate. And it is joyful and scary and terrifying and hard. <laughs> <laughs> totally, yeah. totally. But so worth it. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's hard to know sometimes, um, and it's not easy, right. Even living into our values, they come at a cost, right. Integrity at times, uh, it's not cheap, right. Um, um, just pulling back the layers even. And some people are like, oh, I should know this by now. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'm in my fifties. I have. I work with a coach, I like a therapist from time to time on the side. I'm like, none of us know this. Like we are like the most layered onions on the planet. Mm -hmm. So we are just always every day coming home to ourselves. It's, it, yeah. it's a big deal. Um, and I know you too, I was reading on the podcast, like are really into self-care and I always think I, um, I, um, I do self-hypnosis before I go to bed because mm. I find it easy. I know. Easier. <laughs> I know. It's really weird. And no, I don't run down the street naked acting like a chicken. Um, that's not a joy spot for anyone. Um, uh, there's some really cool science around hypnosis and sleep and whatever have you. And it's a little more concentrated than meditation. It's a little less <laughs> zenny. So uh, I, my brain can do it. And so um, um, even there, we were. Uh, it was, what was he talking about? Um, something about like self-care and, oh, and it, it says, go to like your favorite place. And so he's like a beach. Uh, I love you guys can relate to that more than I can, <laughs> except because I only do it on vacations. And, um, 
I always go to where I journal in the morning because that is my very favorite place on the planet. I feel a hundred percent myself. I get to like be under nobody else's agenda except for mine. And so like, to me, self-care is, is, and I talk about it in the book, like if we don't have space, if we don't have awareness, we are not going to experience the same fullness in life. So whether you call it, you know, fullness or happiness or contentment or peace, or, and I call it joy because it's way easier to spell. Um, <laughs> you're not going to have it. If you don't have some way of caring for yourself. And I know that's a huge priority for both of you too. uh, Like we need to start there. And so that's always my Zen place. (laughs) My husband like goes, he does it too. He's like, yeah, I went to a, I was like on the beach in Hawaii. I was like, I was having coffee journaling. Cause I'm like this weird five-year-old. It's just like, what are we going to write about today? But I was like, that is my favorite place. And Mm. so I I think that we don't have any of, um, we do not have the same capacity if we're not giving to ourselves first and then Mm. coming out into the world with those other people, we're not going to show up the same authenticity. We're just, you know, we're tired. We're being dragged around by, you know, different things. So Mm -hmm. yeah, self-care has a lot to do with that too. Totally. Yeah. So besides the hypnotherapy, what else do you do for yourself for (laughs) self-care? So that's just for sleeping. And it's only because I'm an insomniac because I mentioned my age a few times and things happen. (laughs) Um, um, Oh my goodness. I literally think I am like ultra high maintenance. So I get up about five (laughs) and it came out of a coaching call early on. I've been coaching for 11 years. It was my birthday. And um, my coach is very, uh, um, I was going to say the dead one, bless her the dead one. Um, she, uh, she was doing, um, she just said, you know, tell me about a peak experience. And so we were, I I can't remember. I was visualizing a peak experience. And she goes, I feel like you have a gift and that somebody wants to give you a gift. And I was like, okay. So I pictured this box. She goes, open the box. And I am very visual. Um, and, um, and in the box, she goes, what is, what's in the box? The first thing I saw was my face. And she goes, what does that mean? And I was like, I feel like the gift is I'm getting myself back. And she said, um, wow, what would that look like to lock that in? So that's when I started journaling uh, 11 years ago. My birthday is in October. I think I've missed four days since then. Wow. Um, And so I, and it just felt like torture. I was like, just like, you know, could you get up a little earlier? I was like. I'm grieving. I just come out of this brutal divorce. Mm-hmm. I was trying to build my business. I call it raking in money. I was frantically trying to <laughs> build. <laughs> yeah. Rev, yeah. Rev Jenning, I call it Rev, or Jen Revving, yeah. uh, generating revenue very quickly. And uh, I was like, oh my gosh. So I was getting up 15 minutes earlier. I think it was like 6 30 or something, but that felt like the world's biggest sacrifice but I was like really starting to feel grounded and amazing. And so since then I get up now at five o'clock in the morning. Um, and so, uh, I journal every morning. Uh, sometimes I meditate, uh, I read something that's just for me. Sometimes it's personal development or (laughs) because I'm a total nerd, neuroscience and personal development. (laughs) I want to know the why behind things. Mm -hmm. I go for a short walk, get my face in the in the sun, or at least outdoors for 20 minutes snowing again, because I'm a total nerd. If you walk for 20 minutes outdoors at any speed, it's the same as taking an antidepressant. Um, I used to work out, uh, every morning, but I am, uh, have an injury. So I'm just getting back into it, but always that time in quiet and silence and some sort of movement, either stretching mm-hmm. or walking. Um, and I'm just learning how to run again. So, um, super important. I would not miss it. Like literally I, yeah, you would have to hold a gun to my head. Um, I do not think for one millisecond I would be who I am without starting out that way. It's mm, awesome. Yeah, I feel like like journaling is kind of a missed thing. Mm-hmm. A lot of people just don't even know where to start when it comes to journaling. Like even me, like sometimes I'm like, Ugh, what do I... Re- what do I even yeah. build up? But then well, your book you know. even has questions in it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Show I, know. I, I call it coaching in a can. I'm <laughs> just <laughs> like, hey, if you don't have a coach, here's some questions. Yeah. And you could, yeah. yeah. My first yeah. editor is like, I hate journaling, but I did take two questions and I took them with me and just thought about them. I was like, mm. that's great. Um, I have somebody in my family and they, they're going to read it as a couple and they're going to each ask each other two questions and they will answer both of those questions. Mm. But I'm like, what a wonderful way to connect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, <laughs> we're going to read this book again and again. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's the whole idea is that opportunity to reflect. And I think that's what self-care does for us is it creates that space, right? Like even going on a walk, it creates, I mean, obviously it's good to move your body, but it, it creates an opportunity to reflect. Um, and I just think we are better people when we are aware. Yeah, totally. I love yeah. that. And that's, yeah. well, we did an episode a while back. I think it was like last October, um, about a morning routine. And so we talked, like, it sounds like you've got like the most solid morning routine ever, yeah. which is fantastic. I call it like chocolate for my soul. And when I'm stressed out, I literally want my bomb to sit in exactly like cheek spot. <laughs> it's just amazing. There's not like too dense. Cause I was just like, okay, you just need to be there. Yeah. If you are there, you can survive almost anything. Don't take yeah. her away from the couch where her cheeks need to be like yeah. centered. Um, yeah. 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 I just, I just don't even know. Like I talk about it all the time with my husband because he also gets up at five uh, and does all the same things. And I was, he's like, I can't believe I just used to get up and grab a coffee at work and go straight to work. Like we are meant for so much more. Uh, and you do not have to have like my extensive routine. I've just literally become addicted <laughs> to my time before I can give to anything else. So um, the other thing I do for self-care is I take a nap after work every day, um, 20 minutes. Um, people who nap live three to four years longer. I have a very serious medical condition. I've got a number of brain tumors and spinal tumors, and I'm trying to work together. So mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, let's just all behave. So if I give yeah. you what you need, rest and water and love and sunshine, um, then maybe we can all, I just really believe that stress just makes things so much worse. escalate. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm like, okay, guys, we're going to work together. So, and I'm not saying that, uh, I, I, I mean, so far they're well-behaved, but, um, yeah, I've lost people in my family to these things. So I really am seriously committed. I'm just like, do not grow on this podcast. Yeah. They're in the back of my head. So <laughs> and you guys are like, you yeah, don't die. Yeah. <laughs> I won't. <Please> don't. <laughs> yeah. Not on the podcast. Yeah. Like edited that part out. Just a little yeah. bit of a downer. Yeah, yeah sorry. <laughs> She's gone. Yeah, <laughs> she should have meditated longer. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So those serve as a reminder that life is very, very precious, and I want to work alongside of what I've got, um, mm -hmm. and not just think that yeah, energy and health is finite. Yeah, I think that's such an important message, right? And it's you just don't know. <laughs> You do not know. I do love, I love how you say life is precious and not life is short. Cause that is so true. I know. Plus if this manifesting thing is true, then you're just like, and Leona does die on the podcast. You're like, well, there you go. <laughs> like her she manifestation said it was short, was strong. <laughs> Done. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Oops. Oh. Yeah. Be careful what you put out there. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh goodness. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for sharing all of this with us. It's, oh, uh, thank this has you. Been, this has been a joy. I yeah. think this is my oh, joy spot for today. This has been such a gift for me. Yeah. So so grateful. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Will you tell our listeners and watchers where they can find you also? So that they can also have more joy in their lives. Yeah. Oh, this is where I feel famous. Uh, Cause all the cool kids do, do this on the <laughs> podcast. Uh, they can find me on Facebook and Instagram at the joy spot, which I picked out literally whenever Facebook and Instagram was birthed. <laughs> now I'm so on accidentally on brand. I was like, this never happens to me. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> uh, so the joy spot, and I love to connect there and I'm not, like I am just a regular, well, no, probably not super normal, but very harmless. You are not going to find schmoozy, <laughs> hire me stuff there. Mm -hmm. uh, no, you may go to the thrift store with me a couple of times, but you'll like yes. it. Um, thrift store Thursday. We didn't talk about that. <laughs> I, oh, I didn't even post yet. Thank you for reminding me. Um, uh, and um, uh, they can go to uh, finding your joy spot and they can find more information about my book or Leona uh, and um, happy to connect there. And I am a regular human being. So if somebody's like, I would not know joy, like for a millisecond, or if it like literally punched me in the teeth um, and they want a little more joy, I have all the 20 minute complimentary sessions actually in the world, even though I tell my clients like, you know, <laughs> you know five a month. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, uh, um, so if they want to reach out and they want to connect, I am a real live person who just mm -hmm. wants to connect with yeah. people and help them 
help them create a life they love. So, um, yeah, no schmaltzy, salesy, anything. So, um, yeah. So amazing. Fantastic. Yeah. That was great. Well, no more questions. No, although I, I'm kind of curious about this thrift store. Thursday now. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, let's well. give a short segment. Yes, yeah, just a short segment. Okay. Now I'm curious. Yeah. <laughs> So you, I am, I, I am like values driven. They like help me fall into bed at night thinking I did that well, even though I was terrified or that was hard or felt awful. Um, and so one of my values is resourcefulness, which ties beautifully into being a Dutch cheap person, but it goes back to my life is precious. Like, right. Like I am not going to work 80 hours a week running all these companies, forget it. Then we'll just like ditch one. It does yeah. not even matter to me. Um, energy, time, all the things resources and being resourceful matter hugely. And so, um, I, um, started shopping in thrift stores because I had to, um, and it was fun to get things on sale and be able to close yourself with glory and, and, um, and not have to have some payment plan at Aritzia plus Aritzia, but, um, <laughs> I might cheap. be wearing a Aritzia, but somebody else wore it first right? <laughs> and probably wore it amazingly. Um, and so during COVID, uh, I would, I mean, I go to thrift stores occasionally, but during COVID, um, cause we were eating at home 24 seven. I was, I, and I'm not one, I didn't grow up in a family where you like plate your food or like we ate out of pots and pans on the table. We were, I don't know if that's normal, but it was normal for us, but then you're eating at home all the time. And we starting to cook nicer meals because there was no other options. Um, and, um, and so we uh, decided to go to a thrift store, I think one night to, I don't know, do something. And, and then we started to buy nice, like serving dishes and it looks so, it was so like, what do you do during COVID? Like mm. besides write a book, like it's very boring. So we were making nice meals and then we were plating these things and they looked amazing and it was so joyful. So we started to buy like, like <laughs> they're like British. Like if you watch the crown, you see our surfing, not ours, but <laughs> I was like, <laughs> Oh, we are pretty bougie here with our <laughs> 699 silver plated things. Yeah. Um, cause this is what the queen eats on the crown. So yeah. <laughs> anyways, like little lids. And so that mm -hmm. became very fun. Cause I was like, he needed to create some meaning during COVID. Mm -hmm. And then I was, I would find the occasional outfit. And uh, my husband was like, I don't think you can buy men's clothes here. <laughs> anyways, he lost 30 pounds during COVID. He is entirely outfitted in thrift store clothes. And so it became an obsession. We go every Wednesday for date night. We used to go out for a glass of wine, but thrift stores were open and wine was not plus it didn't feel so good for a while. Yeah. Um, and so, and we stopped drinking during the week. That's another episode and <laughs> <laughs> our one glass of wine a night. Yeah. And so we started going to thrift stores and then it became so fun. So I started thrift store Thursdays. Um, and so now every Thursday I post something that either I've bought this week, I gave a lot away. Um, and so this is my newest <laughs> shirt from the Beautiful. thrift store. Um, I just love the idea. And I'm all like people who I just think you do you, but I do love the idea that it like for me, that, that is better for the like earth. Right. And I think how mm -hmm. wonderful plus resourcefulness for me is about use your resources where you want to use your resources so you can save for somewhere else. Right. Yes, so, exactly. um, it just makes me so happy. I can barely stand it. So I think uh, some people are just like, how can you have all these used things? I have like a pillow on my couch now and they're like, did you like spray it down? Or I was like, <laughs> and I'm a germ fanatic actually. And I was like, no, I'm high trust. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> if, if you have bed bugs, I'm going to be pissed off, but yeah. <laughs> I will work through it. And I have yet to get yeah. bed bugs. So yeah, I don't develop a scientific experiment on my anti bed bug thing. Um, but um, yeah, I, yeah, I literally had to tow 99% of the time and thrift store things. So I just think, yeah, you got a $10 outfit on and I've got an RSP. I'm like, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Or I can hire a bookkeeper to send out my invoices. Yeah. Yes. I like that too. Yeah. yeah. Although you can't write off clothes that you buy at the thrift store, just so you know, it's not That's legal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it, 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 integrity says, you yeah, know, no, no. can't try either, but yeah, that's, that's my thrift fair. store Thursday. Yeah. yeah. If you it. follow me at the joy spot, you will see some sort of random outfit or some very sparkly crystal, mm -hmm. you know, candlesticks or something very random that you probably don't need. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah. So that is <laughs> so that. Cool. Yeah. I love awesome. it. Yeah. <laughs> I like the little segment now. Right. I like it. It's neat. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad we covered that. That's great. Yeah. I know. It popped Plus, into my Thursday. head earlier it's and then Thursday. I forgot to ask. Yeah. And it is yeah. Thursday. Yeah. So Indeed. just meant to be. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. I just got asked to write a blog now for a local uh, charity for a thrift store. They're like, there you go. We love what you're doing and how you highlight us. I was like, oh, well, you're my favorite thrift store. So yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So I'm like, yeah, yeah. Love I it. may be sponsored by thrift stores soon. It's hey, my dream, actually. Yeah. Hey, that's yeah. a good one. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. And yes. Well, thank you so, so much, Leona. Thank you. I really, Such really a gift this. to be here. Yeah. So, so it. great. Thank you to both yeah. of you. And thanks to all our listeners. Um, if you have any questions for Leona, either reach out directly to her or give us a shout. We'll stay in touch with her as well. So I uh, hope everyone else enjoys this as much as we did. Yeah. Mm, and don't forget to you. like and subscribe to the podcast. Yes. Yes. Never miss an yes. episode. Beautiful. Awesome. awesome. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Thriving Tides. Hit the subscribe button to never miss an episode. Follow us, Thriving Tides, on Facebook, Instagram, and now YouTube to stay connected. And remember, don't fight the rip currents.